Hello, Mr. McLaughlin here, and welcome to another PowerPoint of notes. Uh, this is going to be Chapter 2.4, Beginnings of Slavery in the Americas. Uh, you can't see, because I need to get new clip art for this PowerPoint, because it's been quite a while since I designed it, but this picture is a diagram of a slave ship. And so, basically, they would cram slaves in the under part of a deck. And uh, so, essentially, let me give you an idea of what we're talking about here. This is going to be part of what's called the triangular trade. And it was a trade between Europe, Africa, and uh, Americas, and basically bringing slaves over in exchange for guns and other things like that that they're trading for over here. And so um, the Europeans um, were setting up colonies and then utilizing slave labor to essentially work on all of these different islands and stuff. That's why when you go to these islands, like the Lesser Antilles, they're called, all these little islands, and then you have the, the Greater Antilles over here, the bigger islands. Um, that's why when you go to these islands, you'll see things like this, sugar plantation mills. Um, unfortunately, the Native Americans were pretty much, uh, not all, but a lot were eradicated from disease, by disease. Columbus came over and those he didn't uh, wipe out with the sword were taken out by diseases like smallpox, measles, and other stuff like that, as we saw in our last notes video. And so what they started doing is they started bringing over Africans to work on sugar plantations um, that were actually established well before <clears throat> the Africans were brought over, but they were brought over to replace the Native Americans as workers because the Native Americans were dying. Africans had been exposed to European disease and had immunity. And so um, they were brought over on the middle passage, crammed onto these ships, <clears throat> 15 to 20 percent mortality on the way over. And um, so they participated in this trade. This is the answer to number 13. Uh, the slaves basically were taken any age and, you know, they were traded from slave traders in Africa and brought to the colonies. Uh, they were brought to work on sugar plantations because uh, they were immune to the disease. So pause it there if you need that one. Um, we read the story or the account, if you will, of Olada Equiano, who was actually an escaped slave. He told of his journey uh, and his experiences, and he described being taken on board a slave ship and um, just the awful violence and other things he witnessed. And uh, he was able to actually escape, get to freedom, and uh, actually wrote his story down. And so, um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I'm not much of an artist, um, but I did attempt to draw like a few uh, diagrams and sketches of, of some of the slave ship stuff. Um, and then also, uh, you know, just, just to give an idea of what like a slave ship looks like. And, um, you know, maybe I'll perhaps take a picture of, you know, the diagrams I drew up and stuff and replace this clip art with that. Um, and then also we discussed some of the other, um, some of the other aspects of this were, you know, slaves who unfortunately were not like Iquaino, who did get caught, <clears throat> um, unfortunately met some pretty terrible fates. Um, you know, one of those, uh, the Portuguese had a tradition of putting a javelin in the ground and they would basically lower people into the javelin. Uh, there was a method that they used in the salt mines and diamond mines of South Africa, Central Africa, um, where they would actually do what was called hobbling. If you've ever seen the movie <clears throat> by uh, Stephen King, uh, Misery, basically, it's it was seen in that movie as well. They would take like a block or something and put it between the person's ankles and then smash their ankles with a club, breaking their ankle. And their ankle would heal, but they would never be able to run again. And so... Uh, pretty gruesome stuff, um, and so that was basically to keep them from running away. Um, so this was the question we looked at today, to put yourself in the shoes of someone who was taken from their homeland in Western Africa on board a slave ship. What are some thoughts that might be racing through your head when they capture you? Um, now, a lot of Equiano's journal, his memoirs are all available online. You can actually look those up. It's very, very interesting, and he describes his initial thoughts, and uh, that's what we read today in class. And so, guys, I hope you found this uh, notes video interesting. Hopefully, 
it helped you out and to get caught up on what you missed, make sure you check out Critical Thinking 2 and complete that in your packet. But uh, that's all we got today for these notes. And uh, <clears throat> I hope this was helpful. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. Turn post notifications on so you won't miss another video for this class. And we'll see you in the next American History class. Have a good day in historic Greenville, PA.